Hey everyone and welcome back to the It's Good To Talk podcast. So joining me this week is Tier Mjolnir. So Tier is a streamer on Twitch and uh, he's joining me today basically to talk about how uh, gaming has helped him with mental health. Um, I can actually talk a little bit myself about that kind of thing, specifically maybe Twitch more than the gaming side. Um, but that's just what we're going to be talking about. Um, don't know how long this will be, but we shall see. So how are you doing, Tier? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Um, yeah. Getting ready for um, a lot of marathons at the end of the month, but other than that, we're yeah. doing okay. Um, so, yeah, as I say, you are a, a, a Twitch streamer. You yeah. primarily game. So is there a type of, um, uh, is there something that actually took you onto Twitch? Like, is there, was it the case that you got onto Twitch and thought, fuck, this is helping me chill out? Or was it, I need something to fucking do, I'm going to go onto Twitch? Yeah, so I started streaming about, uh, well, it's about 17 months ago now. So it was February of last year, right? So um, COVID hadn't really happened. It was starting up, right? It was uh, February 2020. And um, I uh, I really didn't get into Twitch because of COVID. And I didn't really get into it um, like to, it was a couple different reasons. I've been gaming since I've been three years old. Oh, okay. So like when I was three, I would get babysat and my babysitter, she had a Nintendo and um we i would i remember distinctly sitting on the floor on their like console tv like old school console tv and uh playing super mario brothers and uh and it's just from that point on is how my gaming habits started yeah. um but as far as streaming is concerned um i got started it was like hey i love video games i've been playing them my whole life um i feel like i'm a decent person like people will connect kind of connect with me yeah. um let's just try the streaming thing out and i didn't know anything about it right i was like i'm gonna play games if something happens as far as being famous whatever like a game for a uh, a reason like a for for a career you know if it yeah. turns into a career and i can full-time support myself like this that'd be amazing right but you know who knows what happens <clears throat> so that's how it helped like kind of started yeah. and then along the way since i've been doing this over a year and like a year and a half now mm. Probably about, I would say like six or eight months into it, I, I was still kind of like a smaller streamer and, and I'm still small by any means, mm. but um, there, like a, a light bulb kind of clicked where I started connecting with people more. Yeah. Um, we had, so I was, when I first started streaming, I was in a discord that was very, very um, frat. It was like a frat house in there. Okay. Uh, so there was a lot of stuff going on where it was like, Hey, it's, you know, everybody's out for themselves and uh you know, I'm the person that runs the discord. So everybody's supposed to be in my stream. And then like, if I, I'll, I'll toss scrap to you, I'll raid you if I like you. And like, that was the way it was. And there was a couple other folks who were in that discord with me who actually are part of uh, uh, the organization I'm in now. Mm. Um, and we were trying to clean that up. We were trying to like make a place where everybody could succeed. We were helping each other out. And there wasn't really a purpose behind that, except the fact that we felt like we wanted everybody to have the same resources and the same <clears throat> opportunities to uh, get attention. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> that didn't work out. We kind of got like kicked out or pushed out and we decided like, this is not for us. So we started our own thing. And <clears throat> along the way, as I built these relationships with people, it was like, it was, it's almost like a light bulb moment, but not so much that the light bulb just went on. Like the, the light bulb went from, um, Sorry. Low. I'm still here. I'm just having okay. to use my camera. I don't know why it's gone funny there. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Um, so it was more like the light, like a dimmer, right? So like the light bulb slowly would be getting, you know, turning on and, and turning bright um, where I started building these relationships and getting to know these people. And it's, it turned into a thing for me where it's like, it's not about me anymore when I stream. Yeah. It's about providing a space where people can be themselves where i mean including myself right i can i can be myself in the stream yeah people can come in they can you know talk about what they need to talk about whether that's heavy stuff whether that's goofy stuff whether that's um you know whether they want to be lewd that's one of the things that we like to do in my channel <laughs> um but it's always respectful and it's always from a place of like this is who i am yeah. um, and that for me now is like my passion it's really weird that it turned out this way because that was never my intention when it started it was like i'm gonna play games i'm gonna Know, get to know people mm. um, and it's turned into something bigger than me and the cool thing about that is like the people that are around me in the organization that i'm in um and I'm, it's called eqx by the way so i'll just refer to eqx from now on yeah um they have a similar mindset right they want to provide these spaces where people can just come hang out chill you know not everybody's gonna like me um i'm i'm lewd uh i kind of will call it like it is i, I can be professional but i'm very transparent 
Um, and, and I think that sometimes people take that the wrong way uh, and maybe up you. <laughs> you know how this is as well. Yeah, I have, um, I have similar I have similar things when because those that don't know, I'm, I'm also um, stream on Twitch um, uh, for, for doing mental health. And um, yeah, I, I simply don't care about what somebody wants to if they want to be a complete dick on my channel. They are not there for very long um but uh, i will just be honest rather than um beat around the bush because there's too much there's too much there's too much toxic um positivity um specifically on twitch i have to say as well so yeah 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 so um you know i've got those people around me that are that are similar like we're here yeah we're playing games or uh you know for me i, I love to play like story-based games so um uh, for me that's uh, that's like really it's like playing a book and i love to read and i love fantasy and i love that kind of stuff so um, it's like I'm playing a book and I'm getting to experience that with these with these really awesome people in my chat who get to experience that with me and and share their insights and their feelings. And, um, you know, it's kind of turned into this bigger thing than me. And uh, I got to say, I'm pretty, pretty excited about the future of what we're, we're doing, um, what I'm doing. And again, whether that's you know, people when we're on Twitch, we talk about partner and we talk about all this stuff. Like at the end of the day, I don't care about partner. Um, yeah. I'm I could care less. Uh, if I get to that point, you know, I'll think about it, but um, that's not the goal. The goal is like, how do I continue to connect with my friends, these people I care about and provide a space for them to just be themselves? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it does become that. I, I suppose for, for a lot of us as well, it's it has become, because I, I, I come across a lot of people that come into my chat as well when I'm on there that talk about in real life friends. And I always find it really weird because I'm like, but why are there any different to online friends? Like, I know I, I connect with so many people that I know now um, through Twitch um, yeah. yourself and, and most of EQX. I, I know or at least mm -hmm. a lot of the EQX guys I know as well. Sure. So um, just through, through different, through different things. I mean, I, I met one of them because um, I bought them a, um, a weighted blanket when I was on somebody else's podcast, they were doing a giveaway. And I was like, Oh, I'll, th I'll throw in another one. And now I know, know him pretty well. I mean, I've, I've sent him random gifts as well, because I know obviously I have his address now sure. um, and we get on and I'm in, I'm in there. He's, he's actually a, um, one of my mods now on, on, on uh, one of my channels. So it's, it, it's weird when people kind of separate it out because you do tend to go, you know what, these are, these are my friends now. These aren't yeah. just the people online It's very different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and is. I think people, people have got into this mindset of like, no, it's separate, especially maybe that's more in, in terms of mental health, because that's probably, um, I can almost guess the, the way that they're thinking about it. It's probably because a lot of counselors and psychotherapists say, well, you've got to connect this way because basically they're looking, they're looking at an old, um, script. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're just looking at an old script. They just don't understand the differences because a lot of them don't keep up with it. They don't. Keep yeah. Up with it. And nowadays people connect more on, you have the ability to connect you probably more frequent, uh, excuse me, more frequently connect with mm. people online or, you know, through social media, right? Yeah. Then in the past when, you know, imagine even 50 years ago, well, shit, you could probably just go 40, 30 years ago, mm. um, you know, you know, when the telephone was taken off and TV and stuff, um, you, you still had a very small circle of individuals, but now you can go onto Twitter and you can have a 500 plus followers, you know, as a smaller, smaller Twitter user, or if you become, you know, somewhat big, you get the thousands of people that follow you. Um, your, your circle grows. Um, and it's weird that, that we haven't made that, I, that transition yet where like uh, online friends are real friends. They're people, <laughs> there's, there's no yeah, different right? yeah. just because I don't see them physically <laughs> every day. Um, I talk to many of the people that are in, you know, EQX discord streams more than I talk to my family. So, um, and I know just as much about them. Uh, so it's, it's weird that we haven't made that transition yet when social media and just like the digital presence is so uh, it's so huge in our lives. Yeah, yeah, it, it is really strange. Um, and it is something that I think a lot of people, uh, especially in terms of mental health, need to catch up with, because it's unfortunately, th things like things like um, standard um, psychotherapy and counseling, things like that are usually the slowest things to catch up on anything, um, because they like to do the things that they like to do. And that's it. I mean, it took until about yeah. the 70s or 80s for people to suddenly realize that Freud was talking crap. Um, so I mean, <laughs> <laughs> nearly 100 years to figure out yeah. in a minute this is a bit of a problem and actually sure. there were people that knew it was a problem back when he was there um so it, it is weird that 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 isn't being done but hopefully it will catch up and you're right even if i think even 20 years ago we wouldn't have we wouldn't have really yeah. thought about it i mean i remember when i was growing up you had um a lot of comedians talk about this you have a you had a table 
in the hallway and that was the phone and if you wanted to talk to friends if you wanted to connect outside of like school that was it there was nothing mm -hmm. else there was no you know i got my first mobile phone 21 years ago so just over 20 years ago i wouldn't have had a mobile phone i've had to yeah. do, uh, use normal phone in the hallway where everyone can hear I, yeah. just, you know <laughs> cfax which I, I don't know if you had in america but cfax and teletext which was um like a you pressed a button on your tv and it'd bring up like a really old school um you could play games and it. it was very old school it's like okay. um, dot, it's like a dot matrix printer on your tv oh um, but okay. you used to be able to find um like pen pals on there like that was a, oh. that was the nearest you get nearest <laughs> you got to like different people from far away yeah. but you know we're thousands of miles away from each other but we can talk to each other just as much as i could talk to my mother who's 100 miles away you know sure. it's 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 weird it is weird for, for for some people they think it's it's different but mm -hmm. um so do you think now since you've got more into it obviously you say you've been gaming for for a number of years um super mario Bro i've got to ask was it the nes or the snes that you first gamed on nes i'm uh i may be older than i look depending on <laughs> depending I, on how I, you feel so i think i'm older than you that's why i was asking yeah um, no it NES, was NES. NES the one. Yeah. yeah yeah that was but the nes and the original playstation was basically until last weekend was basically the last time I, I gamed. So the okay. original, the ori not the PlayStation 1, but the original PlayStation. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, but now that you've got into like, um, into Twitch more and there's now, obviously you've got EQX who are um, looking at, you know, doing their own competitions and things like that. Yeah. Do you think that potentially there's too much of you that's gone in? So obviously at, at points, like you say, you've managed to use gaming to connect with people and you've made connections and that, that's that's doing you good you know that's that's going to help a lot of a, a lot of your kind of um any thoughts of, of worries or anything like that out um and help you connect it to people especially like during the pandemic and just in the world we're in at the moment where nobody knows sure. what the fuck's going on um <laughs> but do you do you worry that maybe if something goes wrong or i don't know twitch finally gives up the, the ghost or whatever that it will impact you more or do you think actually no i've I, i'm still okay so um, I think I think I'd be all right. Um, so like, uh, you know, let's say, I mean, there's going to be other avenues. Let's say Twitch just goes away, right? I mean, there's a lot of discussion right now in the streaming community about Twitch and the things that they're doing or not doing for that matter for, for some of our marginalized creators. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of this discussion around them changing their habits and, and such, but um, you see a lot of these creators going to other platforms. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, worst case scenario, I don't think all that stuff goes away. So I can move to another platform to have the, that connection. And I think a lot of people who I've connected with would follow. Um, but let's say even EQX just goes away, right? Like, let's say we decide, hey, it's not working for us, or this isn't going to be something that we're doing long term. Um, I still think I would be okay. Um, I think a lot of these people would be okay, because the connection we like the the connection is genuine, right? Yeah. So it's not about a team. It's not about a discord. It's not about, um, you know, what does, can the team do for me kind of mentality, which a lot of people unfortunately have. Um, it's more about like, I like these people, right? I don't care what the title is of it. If it's an EQX or a discord or a stream team or whatever, mm -hmm. it's like, these are my people. And um, so I think that we would find other ways to connect with each other, whether that's through other social media platforms, other, other streaming platforms, um, and for me at this point in time, like I said, I, I never expected for this to be, I, I hate seeing like my purpose or my goal, but, um, it kind of is my drive is really about connecting with people and, uh, seeing them and spending time with them. Yeah. And, uh, so I think that that drive is strong enough to, to, to find its way out. It should something, the worst case scenario happen and all that stuff kind of go to shit. Yeah. I mean, it, it is weird when you kind of find, um, especially on Twitch, when you kind of find any, any niche, I mean, I always describe myself as a, a monkey in a suit um i just i don't seem to fit the 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 thing that most people like me are on there like mental health i don't fit it i don't, I don't fit it at all yeah. i don't but that's what like i like me. about you that's what i like about <laughs> you so like my my first interaction with you was um i believe through uh, another streamers podcast yeah um and it was you and there was uh there was another mental health uh advocate we'll say on there mm -hmm. um and he having the conversation and, um, and I think in ways you and I are similar because most people, when they find me, they say like, oh, this guy's kind of like, he's too abrasive or he's too much or he's overpowering his personality is like, you know, crazy or whatever. Um, and I think you, because you come forward and you're very, you're no bullshit. You're, you know, you'll tell them like it is. You're not afraid to argue, especially if, you know, somebody, you know, somebody is wrong. You're going to let them know they're wrong. Um, I was like, damn, this guy, um, you know, I, I, I like this guy. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, 
I like that. And I like that we're similar. I think it's one of the reasons that you and I get, you know, get along so well is because, you know, those similarities between us. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, that is, that is the good thing. I mean, I think it's, it's also why potentially we've, because we've got, I think you're, you are, you're bigger than me, but it's in terms of, if we just went on followers, we're we're similar kind of size, but it's, it is weird because I'm, (laughs) I did not come onto Twitch at all to do anything. Like I, I was in a, fucking horrendous place and ended up some people said well why don't you turn the camera on and just just talk and i was like all right and i turned it on yeah. and i basically spent an hour ranting about rain man and what a load of bullshit it is um okay which anybody watching out there any of the directors or anything like that, it's utter shite for the love of god it is based on someone who actually we know didn't have autism and everything about that film is bollocks for the love of christ stop thinking people with autism are like um him in that film they really fucking aren't um but i spent an hour basically doing that and then someone <laughs> or maybe even more and then someone just went oh wow you get this like, what do you mean they're like you you were able to speak for that long i was like dude that's just because i don't shut the fuck up like what was going on about and like yeah, yeah yeah you can probably do this now and then it, it suddenly because of like you said, people started following me because it was like, oh, he's not he's not just telling everyone that it's gonna be okay, which yeah. is the bullshit you get. And I think the thing you were talking about is where you get those follow for follow people. And I'm pretty sure I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, yeah. similar name to somebody else. Um, yeah. Um, I thought it was probably them who then has just disappeared. But there's a lot of yeah. like the follow for follow people and sure. the the people that just go, um, oh yeah, no, you're having a bad day. Don't worry, everything's gonna be great. And it's like fuck off. Just and the actual connections, like you were saying about yeah. um, before, the actual connections I think are really important. Um, and I mean, it's the thing with social media, and I think gaming and um, and just social media it, together both get a really bad rep a lot of the time. And it wasn't until the, um, last year or this year i think it was the end of last year that um that one of the universities in the uk i think it was um cambridge actually did the first live study um for mental health and gaming it was the it's, which is amazing because the amount of bullshit that's been said over the years about gaming being a, um really bad for mental health and it's you know it makes you aggressive oh, violence yeah, yeah yeah but none of it had ever been live not one time had they ever done the research live none of the questionnaires nothing had been live so this is the first time they did it live and it's great because when you actually read the the person who led the um the research when you read his comments on it he is just as annoyed about it he's like None of this stuff was live. Why the hell wasn't? And it's just, it's really funny because, you, you know, you expect someone from like a Russell Group University in the UK to be very calm and, you know, well, sure. <laughs> and it was, yeah. you just see it and you, you can almost feel like he was pissed off. Like, what yeah. the fuck is that? And it ended up being the first bit of research and it was, they did it on two games, which I have never played. I don't know if you've ever played, but it was Plants versus Zombies. I've played that, I have. And Animal Crossing. Uh, I not, have not played Animal Crossing, but I know what it is. So they did it on, on those. Um, okay. They did the research on those, and it found a significant increase in well-being, um, thoughts of um, better mental health in general, and it was, it was a significant one. So all of this research has always said, oh, it's bad, no, da, da, da. And then the one bit of research, as it actually does it in real time during the pandemic, oh, no, actually, it's fucking brilliant for your mental health. And unfortunately, yeah. it gets such a bad rep, and so does social media. I mean which people forget Twitch is social media, really. It it's is. Just, but I think the difference with Twitch is it's actually far more interactive. Like Twitter, I literally have on my Twitter bio, I may make a comment on a, on something. I'm not going to argue. There's no point here. It literally says that. I have yeah. it in there because there's no point going back and forth. At the end of the day, yeah. if you're on Twitter arguing, you made your mind up before you responded. So if somebody asked me to comment on something, I may comment and then I'm just going to mute the person if they reply. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I, I don't want to have an argument yeah. with you because it's not going to be an intellectual argument. Whereas sure. Twitch, you can actually talk to people. You're actually interacting properly. Um, yeah. You know, that's what it's for. And I mean, I, I had a podcast with Call Me Chris, um, who is actually on Twitch now, actually. He's on Twitch TikTok, um, YouTube, putting the rest of us properly to, to shame. I mean, she's got like nearly 40 million people on, on TikTok, 2 million on YouTube, That's tens awesome. of thousands on Twitch. Damn it, Chris, if you're listening to this. Um, <laughs> so she'd been on the podcast twice and she was one of the people, first people I'd spoken to that genuinely said, no, social media was actually really good for me um, because before she'd gone into TikTok, she'd just come out, just come out of a slump, but beforehand she was suicidal. Yeah. And then she was just getting over it and she came on TikTok um, and suddenly her mental health went up and it just got better and better and better. And I think 
Twitch and um, and gaming are actually really underestimated for their good impact on mental health. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. There's a load of bullshit. And I mean, you mentioned already we've got the hate raids going on. Um, and I'm not. By the way, before I say this, because you know it's it's on me. I'm not speaking for EQX or for Tier, but fuck you, Twitch. Sort yourselves the fuck out. Hate raids um, can be really damaging to the marginalised people, obviously. Um, and uh, you know, no one really knows what they want, what they're doing, especially in the marginalised community, because they're, they're they're in the middle, not knowing what the fuck to do. Yeah. Um, so it, obviously, there's bad as well. But um, do you think that when you go on, when you have gaming, if we took away gaming from your life and social media? Do you feel there would be a big slump in your mental health or do you do you think, no, I'd be all right? Or is it the case, like you say, you've been doing it since you're three years old. Yeah. Would it be the case of just going, no, I've basically lost a part of myself? It, it's, it's been a huge part of my life and even developmentally. So like as a child, you know, I mentioned I play story games like when I stream. Mm. Um, I love RPGs and I've always loved RPGs um, because for me playing games like RPGs and story-based games, um, it's like playing a book. I love to read. Um, I have learned, I would say I have learned a lot, whether it's about vocabulary, life, just things that you encounter in these games and the stories they that they tell um, that has really like changed me as a person. Um, so it would probably be very detrimental to my health to not have gaming as an outlet. Um, yeah, man, like aside from my wife and my dog, like other than gaming, that's pretty much gaming and Twitch is like all I do. Uh, there's a gym. I work out quite a bit. Um, but if it, it, I probably would dive into like the physical fitness thing even more. I probably would read more. Um, but if you were to take away gaming or the, the connections that I've made um, through social media, um, it would be detrimental to me because like even this uh, as soon as this past year, uh, I had a really tough April and May. Um my my dog was sick and she's like my my daughter basically uh, i know it sounds cheesy to some people uh, but i don't have any children so my wife and i we have a dog and she's like our baby um she was sick and she's been through a lot over the years um she's a cancer survivor um this past april we learned she has it's called ibd which is basically like the dog version of irritable bowel syndrome um but she has very specific dietary needs and it can cause her to have uh, to lose weight and get sick and vomit and, and all that kind of stuff so we didn't know that was happening at that time so we're going through this stressful period waiting for tests um you know and pay paying obviously thousands of dollars for um specialists for her um and the people that were around me were there for me they supported me they checked on me um i had some other financial stuff went down with my vehicle and the irs like there's all this stuff and you know i if it wasn't for the people that were supporting me around that time uh, people who i've met specifically through twitch uh, and some of these communities who were again checking on me asking if they could help me out, but you know, did I need to talk to them or could they help me some way? I had people offer me financial help, which was weird as hell to me because I am not the type of person, um, first of all, to usually share those kinds of things when they're going on, especially like financial stuff. It's weird. It's just weird yeah. for me. I don't want it to ever sound like I'm asking for anything. Um, they offered to do that. And I'm like, I was just mind blown. And that was just one of those more reaffirming things that I, that kind of told me, that when I started to feel this way about connections and helping people, like for somebody to do the same thing for me, it made me just reaffirm my path, right? Like, it's just like, this is the right thing to be doing. I care about these people because they care about me. And, you know, they have bad days and I'm there for them. And now they're here for me when I have a bad day. So yeah, I think there would be, there would definitely be a hole that I would have to, to fill um, if I didn't have those outlets. I mean, I know obviously you do or have done uh, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has a very um, good reputation in terms of camaraderie. So, my, totally. um, my, my simple question there, because you were saying about the gym and things like that, other things you do, is because the usual thing that people say, and it is, it, it is helpful to some people, it can be helpful to everybody, but it is not the final answer. Somebody just going, I'll go for a run or something isn't the fucking answer. But obviously a lot of people say, go and, go and work out. Do you think um, BJJ, for instance, or streaming slash gaming is better for your mental health in general? So com comparatively? Yeah. Um, it's like, that's great. Uh, that's a great question. So prior to streaming, I used to spend a lot of time, um, you know, I, I'm a former mixed martial artist. 
So uh, I spent a lot of time training jujitsu and Muay Thai and wrestling and all those kinds of things. Yeah. I would say it's very, very similar because like you mentioned, and, and even, I, I guess I can't speak for being outside of BJJ, but BJJ was included in my, in my, um, in my gym. Yeah. So um, there was a strong connection with us, like as fighters. I mean, I don't know. There's, I, I would say that in my experience, there's probably two things that can, really connect people, right? Is a connection through, I'm gonna say mental trauma. And I don't know if that's the right word. You can feel free to correct me or put a better spin on it, but like a, a connection through a, some kind of heavy emotional or mental um, turmoil that happens, right? Because when you're involved with that as a group, um, it tends to pull people together or, and, and generate connections. And the other thing is the physical side of that, like a very physical task, whether that's beating the crap out of each other in the gym or you know pushing each other to the limit. Um, and honestly, the, for whatever reason, this popped in my head, <clears throat> it's almost like the military too. Think about the connections that people in the military have. It's that physical turmoil and the mental turmoil. A lot of those guys have connections for a, a lifetime and they have a very hard time separating themselves from those individuals. So uh, to me, it's a very similar to that where it's like the, you make those connections that are lifetime connections. Yeah. I mean, um, obviously we've had, um, I've had Steve on here, who we yeah. both know, um, right. who's ex-military um who's you know who, who had that similar thing so yeah i mean it's it does seem that kind of thing so yeah yeah so um that that's what it seems like to me and again I'm, i I do, not, I do not have any military experience so i can't can't be sure but that's what it feels like it would be similar to um man it's tough to say i um i think at this point for me i'm able to connect with more people from streaming and gaming um, and I think for me, that's, it's one of those questions of like, how do you make the biggest impact? Um, so I think that is what's helping me the most. So I, if I think of it in terms of scope of, you know, how many people I could help or that impact me, I think the streaming gaming gives me that opportunity to do that. And, um, so I think that would be a bigger loss than like, you know, not being able to do the physical aspect of it all, even those connections that I would make with a team, um, like locally in person. Yeah. Which I think is potentially something I, I, kind of guessed that you would go that, that route um i mean i think potentially for a lot of people that is something that they wouldn't expect i mean for, for because again the obvious response is oh go for a run go to the gym that's going to help you that's going to make you so much better and like sure. i say of any martial art bjj isn't isn't my favorite however the one thing i will say is bjj is one of those of three or four i can think of that you are known if you're in there your family the same as things like judo boxing yep. those are the ones where you go in you're now sure. one of us that's that's yep. just how those kind of gyms work um and so that the fact that it's it's separate is is interesting i mean obviously i come from martial arts background as well i've done it um longer than most people i know through twitch have been alive which is worrying um because i've trained since i mean my first grading was in judo which was 1989 um and those of you that can see in the background um like half of those are qualifications in um instructing in martial arts um uh, martial arts and self-defense and knife defense and all that kind of crap um, and i would say a similar thing it is that now potentially I don't know, at least for me that is something to do with the fact that the pandemic has been on and in the uk we've been far stricter about it than in the us um despite what i know a lot of people are listening going oh well you've been boris been shit yes he has been shit <laughs> but they had trump um so <laughs> so but um it's you know it I think it is the case now that I, I would feel um, far more connected or safe in certain environments through Twitch than I necessarily would <clears throat> in certain environments through self-defense and martial arts. Now, that's not the case yeah. across the board, obviously. Sure. But in general, um, I, I think that definitely is the case, which is is something that's weird. Because if you'd have asked me that two years ago, I'd have gone, well, no, it's the dojo. Like, that's, yeah. that's what I'm going to be. Like, my students... Right. My students, I've, you know, the yeah. simple things like, you know, um, the, the, the thing that I was always taught um, was if you hit someone in training, the person you hit owes you a pint. That was the thing, you know, and I always loved this because people are going, oh, they hit me in the face. Yeah, well, you own a drink. Why the fuck didn't you move? Like, <laughs> so that was like simple things like that was how you then got to go together. Like you'd hit someone yeah. in the face and then you go, right, pub. Right, we're going to now have a, <laughs> have a chat. We're going to have a drink. Yeah. It's all going to be yeah. fine. And yeah. I think that is, I mean, that's possibly very toxic masculinity, I think, <laughs> but that's the good side of toxic masculinity. If yeah. a good side. Like yeah. it was the kind of like, we're going to be the shit out of each other, but it's fine. It's a bit like, um, it reminds me of um, that film with Brad Pitt. I've completely got it in my head now. Um, Brad Pitt and H Edward Norton. Um, 
Oh, Fight Club. Fight Club. It's, it's a bit like that. It's like, yeah, we're we're a, we're a we're a family, but we're going to beat the shit out of each other. And yeah. it was like, like, like that. I mean, yeah. I've the amount of times I've just. I mean, I got given. Um, so, uh, so um, in a week after I came back from my honeymoon, I went and trained um, under a former Israeli Defence League um, guy and got severe concussion. And then we were absolutely fine afterwards. No, it's all good. We're just have, having a laugh in the hospital. Like I was so badly concussed because the guy I was uh, sparring with was the former um, North of England heavyweight Muay Thai champion. Um, and I was so badly concussed. The doctor told me I wasn't allowed on public transport by myself. <laughs> But we were fine. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah was no, no. Because my, my 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 late wife couldn't understand it. She was like, "The fuck is going on?" I'm like, "That's yeah, fine. How much yeah. too much?" Like, but what? So there is a connection there that I think a lot of people, especially people that don't fight, don't yeah. get. Um, yeah. You know, there's a there's a lot of people that go to the gym that that fight um, that don't get because it's not the same. It's yeah. it's just not the same. You don't understand. Um, and so I think it's very strange that. For, for some of us, at least, you you and myself have started to go, actually, now I feel more, I feel more comfortable here now. That's actually, that's yeah. actually the place. Not maybe not by much, but even the fact that it's anywhere near. I mean, I don't know how long you, you were training for, but like it's th- over 30 years for me. Yeah. So you got me beat. <laughs> like, I'm literally, I mean, I'm literally, one of the people we know um, together is, like, I'm literally a fucking... Uh, I'm, I'm literally published in a martial arts and self-defense book i've been doing this for a long time um it's really i love that because one of the people that's on like the front cover is one of the people that trained me so that's i'm awesome. like i'm in the same book as you fuck yes, um, yes. so but it's <laughs> like the, the fact that I, I like i'm i'm there thinking now actually i now have a bit of connection with these yeah. i think is is really cool um yeah. and, and unexpected I mean, are you in the same thing of like, if somebody had said this to you 18 months ago, because you said it'd been 17 months. If somebody 18 months ago had gone, yeah, actually you're going to get on with these with these gamers, these fucking weirdos on the internet. They're going to get on with them way, way more, or at least a little bit more than your brothers in, in the gym. Right? Yeah, no, I would have been, I would have been like, yeah, shut your mouth. Because, <laughs> yeah, because uh, like, even because the, my intention was never to even c- connect with, like, it was not my intention walking into it. It was like, I'm going to play games. I'm going to chill. If I meet some cool people, all right. But then it's like along the way, you meet people that you're like, you really just, I hate using the word vibe with, right? But it's just like what people understand. Like you vibe with these people. Right, Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we vibe together, you know, but no, no, like you connect with them in ways where it's like, you know, oh, so I'm, I'm a pagan, right? So um, I've met other pagan streamers and other pagan individuals. And we have, we have deep philosophical conversation about, you know, their beliefs and their practices. And I think that's even another layer that you can add into the mix as you start meeting people who, um, have similar belief systems, right? Because we all kind of like, we like to, you know, birds of a feather or whatever. Um, it's nice to have that comforting feeling of people who are similar to you. And I don't encourage people to always be comfortable because I think that's bullshit. Um, you've got to be outside of your comfort zone 100, you know, as much as you can to grow. But um, you start connecting with these people and those relationships become very easy. So, um, no, I, I never would have thought that we would, you know, or I would be in the position that I'm in to, to connect with people and just, the other really weird thing is when people, as it's when I'm streaming and they say like, I want to be like you. And I'm like, whoa, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? This yeah. big, it leads you to be a little more specific. And they go, well, you, you know, you provide a safe place. Or every time I come in here, I feel like I can be myself or, um, you know, it feels like home or it's a chilling, chill environment. And we get crazy in the channel sometimes, you know, we get excited, we get hyper, but they're like, you know, this is a place where I can come in, I can be myself and nobody's going to judge me which is really like, I mean, that's, that's blows my mind that, that somebody would feel that way or even look up to me to want to be similar because, you know, I don't consider myself a role model at all. So. No, it's, I mean, it is, it is weird. I mean, I have literally behind my monitor here, I have um, a letter because I used to have a, like a secondary address that people could send stuff to. And I got sent um, a letter from someone who was actually one of my OGs, who was one of the people that encouraged me to actually stream in the first place thanking me saying like um thank you so much for being there like i was so really bad the other day and i was waiting on your channel for you to start and it's just like what what the f- what like that's that's weird like i because I, i'm not 
and I mean, I've got into, um, I was always doing mental health stuff before. Right. Like I was, I, I ran the university's um, student minds um, and I did things for, for that. And it's not since I came on that I've now, I'm a trainee counsellor. Um, I'm, you know, studying in, in um, a master's in, in uh, mental health. That's right. actually come afterwards. Like yeah. the changes to it is, and it's because I want to understand more. And yeah. um, the fact that it, it, it still fits, you know, the fact that I'm passing is, is you know, <laughs> that's the thing. Cause I, I think when I first, cause I've got, I, 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 uh, I won't say because I don't know how the university would be about it, but I like my counseling is actually, although it's through a different um, thing, it's actually overwritten, like accepted by the university I'm at as well. So it's actually, they're yeah. both from the same place, which is nice. one of um, the Russell group in, in the UK. Right. And the fact that, um, one, I was accepted in there when my back, my basic background in mental health was I run a mental health channel on Twitch. Yeah. Like, the fuck? Like, that was it. <laughs> that was, that was literally it. Like, These are your I, qualifications? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what, you, what, what, we're going to let you in on that? What the fuck are you on about? Yeah. But they let me in. And then the fact that I'm actually passing means that Twitch has taught me something because right. you can't go into that, like, I, I, the university in America is Ivy League, but Ivy League is more sport, but it's it's basically the educational version of okay. Ivy League. So yeah, it's yeah. it's the top educational and research universities of the Russell okay. Group. So okay. for something like that, for me to be able to pass from stuff basically I've learned from reading and from Twitch yeah. is is incredible. And it shows what, what Twitch can actually can actually give you as well. Um it, it's really weird. I love I love that you said um you said pagan as if no no one could figure out from your name. Um <laughs> I, uh, if anyone well I mean Tear is Tear was um got of well integrity was one of the main things, wasn't it? So he yeah justice, law, integrity, sometimes depending on the translation is actually war as well. But yeah. Uh mostly yeah, the, war, it's Norse. I mean yeah <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. We're uh, pillage, pillage, pillage. Um, but yeah mostly like justice or law. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, I think that's because when we say pagan, they, I think everything gets into everyone's head of, you know, some kind of fire. I mean, in England, you know, people think of Stonehenge. So, yeah. And um, they think of the Druids. So, sure. it's, uh, I, the weird thing, anyone's wondering, pagan basically just means non Christian back when the Romans were around. That's basically what it meant. So, yep. it's, it's just yeah. a different religion that yeah. nowadays we'd call something else, but tears sure. being nice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, is in, it is interesting through, through there. I mean, it's, it's not, you don't, I don't think many people come on Twitch for a connection and not a bad way i mean okay there are bad ways as we said there are sure, people who sure, come sure. On just be like oh let's make some money but i think a lot of us don't come on for a connection and then we find it and it's just like what the f yeah this, this well, is so strange and as much as we bash twitch about some of the things that they could be doing for hate raids because you know i could go on all day about that <laughs> there are some things that they've been slow to do that have been helpful um you know they start adding tags in so like there's a pagan tag now since we're talking about this at the moment i've actually met several other pagan streamers who have found me through that tag or who um through my name have found me and now there are people that i care about or um you know who i check in on or who are friends um so it, in that, in that scope, like there's the, like you mentioned, we have the ability to use the, this platform and really any platform that has a similar tool set mm. to, to do the right thing or to, you know, have mental health conversations, yeah. um, create safe spaces and, you know, um, you know, provide a place where people can be comfortable. Um, there's just a lot of good things that we can do with it. Um, yeah. If the intention is, is pure um, and then if you have the right direction, um, and it's, it's, you know, it could be the same on other social media platforms as well, but, um, it just, uh, I wish there was, I wish there was more of it. I wish there was more of it because like you mentioned also earlier, there's a very negative connotation with some of these things like platforms, you know, you can go on Twitter and, you know, people would just call you all kinds of names and argue all day long. Facebook is the same way, just an older generation, basically. Yeah. Um, TikTok can be can become very toxic as well. Um, you know, I try not, I try not to associate myself with that because much like you, you know, you'll make a statement and move on. I don't even, I might read it, but I'm not even going to bother. Like, I'm not going to even just move on with your life. It's your IQ is. Asked. It's usually when somebody says up, oh, can you, can you make a comment or, okay. you know, Adam, can you make a comment? It's, it's that, then I'm like, okay, well, I've been asked now. So I like, I'll make a comment, but now make a statement. I'm, like I, I did one the other day. So um, I responded with, with something and they immediately tried to, like this person was coming, trying to come back at me. And I just went mute. So I'm just, not gonna I, I literally have it in my thing i'm not going to engage with you um yeah. I, I i have issue when um on if you have on your on your twitter page postgraduate as if i meant to think that like, so so was i but I, I graduated like i don't need to put it on my fucking 
Twitter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some people, are, some people, I think the way that they, you see stuff, stuff on there, you kind of go, yeah, you you want to fight, you want to sound yeah. like you're that. I don't give a fuck. Like, it, yeah, <laughs> it becomes a piss. It becomes a pissing contest, right? Yeah. Like you just and it, I'm I don't have time for that, man. I work I work full time. I'm trying to run the streaming, you know, the streaming channel. I'm trying to uh, run an organization. Yeah. Um, I spend too many hours in a week. Uh, supporting myself, my family, and others mm. to waste time on people who don't have the intelligence to have a conversation. <laughs> like just <laughs> exactly. It's, it's one of those things. I think the person actually did like five page response to me and I'm like, I'm not going to read it. So you good luck with that. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't give a shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so somebody was just like, why have you muted them? And I'm like, well, either they're going to go away thinking they've won some kind of argument sure. I wasn't in great for them good or they're going to be wondering about it all night um why i'm not responding either way i'm in their head they're not in mine um <laughs> so and that's what i mean weirdly enough i've actually had someone who said that, that of all social media twitter was the most helpful to them i was like fucking well whatever part of twitter you found well done. yeah yeah um, i mean because twitch i do find twitch i mean it, this is a personal thing and uh, i think twitch is the most genuinely interactive and of course you can you can find fakery because um I, you know i have this debate with people before but no matter how genuine you try and be you are not fully yourself when there's a camera in front of you you're just not sure. it's the same as when you leave the house you can be in a shit mood if you go to the um the supermarket or whatever to buy something and someone's like hey how's your day you don't go oh I'm fucking awful do you you go oh, i'm all right and that's it like that's you, you put that mask on because you have to. That's just a who that's humanity. So of course there's some kind of block up. And what however small that block might be, it's up. Um, but I think that the the fact that you can actually interact far more is uh, is so much better through through things like Twitch. And like you say, the fact that you've been able to find other people, see, it's it's weird for me because I don't really um apart from I looked for just asking at the beginning. I don't really use the tags in terms of looking for someone. I use right. them for me. I don't look for people that way. I usually find them through somebody else and then <laughs> just follow the bullshit. The same way. Yeah. Um, and it's weird because in real life, if I heard, for instance, um, Norse mythology, Norse, myth Norse religion or religion, I tend to switch off a bit. If sure. I hear tarot, whatever, I switch off. And yet on Twitch, I... I have more time for people and then just gonna go, yeah, but you, but I, whatever. Like it's, when it gets to that, yeah. I'm like, cool, fine. Whereas in real <laughs> life, I, don't, I, I would kind of be like, I wouldn't be able to separate it. And sure. I think that's a, that's a good thing on Twitch where I can go, you know what? That's, that's fucking one thing. Like what, they're not going to like everything I do. They're not going to believe yeah. anything. I, so we're going to talk about that. Like that's not, that's <laughs> not, like it's fucking ridiculous. Why would that be yeah. the only thing? Um, yeah. And I think it's, it's good because especially nowadays, um, I think it'd be so damaging, especially damaging to people's mental health, especially like the like younger people, which I really hate being able to say that and it being a thing. Like adults, people that are adults shouldn't be younger people to me. Yeah, sure. um, but they, they they do suffer from the fact that we've become so polar. Like yeah. it's you, you are this or you're this and there's no in between. I'm like, that's not how shit works. I mean, I got really annoyed. <sighs> TikTok, yeah. you were saying about earlier, TikTok had um, their No Nuance November. I'm like, fuck's sake. <laughs> that is not how, no, because... There's levels to fucking everything. No Absolutely. nuance November. You don't get to do that because that's not how that works. <clears throat> you know, it, for instance, me talking about um, Rain Man, if I just went, it's um, Rain Man is an utter, utter disgrace, depending on what side of the fence you want to sit on, you can take whatever opinion you want from that because there's no nuance. Right. Until I then say, <laughs> because it doesn't represent autism properly, because right. of this, this, and this. And then suddenly there's a discussion, there's interaction. Sure. But if you yeah. just say one thing, it's it's so polar. And that's what Twitter, Facebook, and everything is. I mean, Facebook's hilarious. I remember having an argument with someone about um, about Brexit, um, so uh, Britain leaving the EU. Mm -hmm. And their most epic response was, um, get a degree in politics and then get back to me. Now, those of you that don't know, I have an undergraduate degree in politics. I have a master's degree in political theory and practice of resistance, and I was an elected politician locally, and I was a um, qualified political agent. I told them this and said, what else would you like me to get before I respond? And it just, you know, it was it just everyone was with uh, coming after us going, oh shit, <laughs> they never responded. Um, yeah. And it's just like, because they, they you, you can make just a statement and that's it. And that that's it, you know, some yeah. bullshit statement. And if they don't see it, if I hadn't seen it, that's some big win for them online. And I think that's yeah. 
that's where people have an issue where social media is used to win. Twitter is used to win. Facebook is used to win. Whereas I don't think Twitch is. I don't think YouTube is. I don't think TikTok actually is. Although TikTok can be fucking horrendous. It can also be very good. <laughs> um, you know, if you can, if you manage to get around the algorithm so you're in the nice side of TikTok, yeah. I think you're okay. And it's, yeah, yeah. that's the bit because you get to talk. You get to actually have a conversation. And yeah. as this podcast itself it's good to talk and you know it when when we put things down onto paper and that's all it ever is that's where it becomes problematic yeah. um uh, you know i mean so what were you doing be- prior to all this what were you what were you doing with yourself and did you have you kind of overcome any kind of s- specific anxieties and things in in life other than obviously with your dog which i do remember happening actually um yeah. with your dog with past employment and things like that that's been now helped by the connections on twitch or just twitch itself and gaming yeah. and just being there. because i know for some people it's not even about if anyone's watching like I, a friend of mine um um juan who's going to be on again soon um on my other podcast um because um he's also he's ex, ex i'm gonna say ex-marine juan if you're if you're watching i know you're not ex because that's not how you think about it in the u.s but fuck it ex-marine um he's going to be on on again and he doesn't stream for anybody he like in his mind it's just like no, i just stream because i yeah it's 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 a it's cathartic it's it's <clears throat> okay yeah i um so like i've had i've had struggles with mental health my whole life um i uh, I, I can't tell you exactly when it started because there's been, there's always been a lot of anxiety and pressure placed on me from my parents yeah. um, and probably my dad um, with uh, being successful. Um, he was somebody who kind of came from nothing, uh, you know, lived on the streets, was homeless. Like he had a lot of challenges growing up um, and he wasn't supported by his parents. And so there was a lot of that pressure on me to make sure that I was successful and move on. So there was kind of like that, that pressure from them. Um, but then also, you know, going into my teen years, I, uh, I've, I've struggled with things like body dysmorphia my whole life, um, depression. And uh, that's when that all started as like, you know, at 12 years old. And, um, you know, I've always struggled uh, with, I think, just self-worth because I, for a very long time in my life, I tried to find value. My value was dictated by others by the relationships that I had, by being loved. Um, And so it took me a very long time. And it really wasn't until I found martial arts that I actually made peace with like myself. Mm. Um, And I think it's uh, self-confidence was a big piece of that. So I struggled with all of that, you know, through, through my teenage years, uh, attempted suicide, I actually attempted suicide at the age of five. Um, And then again, at 13, Mm. Um, depression through my high school years. Uh, You know, I got into a marriage was not a successful marriage, uh, you know, suffered from depression because of that relationship, got a divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like all my life, I was chasing, uh, I've been chasing value in others or value myself by relationships with others. <clears throat> got into martial arts and kind of found that self-confidence um, and started to build on that. And, um, you know, bringing that up into like to Twitch, um, but all of that experience and all the things that I've really gone through in my life, now I can use those experiences and I'm, I'm, a, I'm not afraid to share those stories with people to help them because of these connections, right? And somebody will say, hey, I'm going through a divorce or this is what's happened and here's the story. As a matter of fact, I'm working with somebody now. And again, I am not a mental health counselor. I'm not qualified for any of these things. I'm not giving them therapeutic advice. I'm just sharing the things that have worked for me <clears throat> and the things that I experienced um, and things that I did that helped me feel at least maybe a little bit better along the way to have that conversation with him um, through his divorce. Right. And, you know, he used to be in the gym and we've had talk conversations about that, that he stopped going. Um, you know, he, he changed a lot of his lifestyle for, for his relationship. And so I can share those experiences with him. And then there are others who are like, Hey, I, you know, I suffer from depression and I can go, you know, we can talk through that. And um, you know, sometimes uh, even though um, you know, I can't solve their problems, just lending an ear is helpful, even if it's just for a moment. So they know that nobody, somebody's actually listening. Somebody empathizes with them. Yeah. Somebody has experienced something similar. And so, you know, for me, all of that stuff, you know, that I've experienced, it almost feels like there's some validation there in a way for me 
that experienced all those things that now I can connect with these people and I can share these, these feelings and experiences with these people um, that I've met through streaming and gaming. Um, and it just it kind of deepens that connection and it brings, it draws people in and they understand that I'm real. You know, you mentioned like wearing a mask or like when every time you put a camera on, you're not really yourself. Mm. Um, and I think that connection is important because people understand that's who I am, but then just telling them stories and like not being afraid. I streamed earlier today. I cried on stream twice mm. for like no fucking reason. I was talking to somebody who was in stream and I was like, oh, get emotional now. Mm. Um, Take your time, dude. <laughs> Get some water, man. Yep. Someone on stream and someone's just hit hydrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> I literally had just turned stream on. Got through the uh, starting soon stream. And uh, somebody had popped in the chat, uh, somebody I care about very much. <sighs> and I uh, <clears throat> hadn't seen her for a while. Mm. And the last time I had talked to her, she was really struggling. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I just want to take that opportunity with her and say, I missed you. <sighs> and that I'm glad you're here. <sighs> I think a lot of us can do that. A lot of us have people that we, that don't come in chat and we, we can worry and we can think. Yeah. Did I say something? Was was something else happened? I had yeah. someone that got out of. I've had two people actually that um, uh, two women that got out of um, abusive relationships that have. That I've then cut. They've come in my chat afterwards. Said, "Look, I'm I'm okay." And it can yeah. be it can be difficult. It can be it can be hard. Yeah, I just uh, you know she showed up in chat and I was just so happy to see her and and just tell her like, I know you've been going through stuff and I know that life is not fucking easy. It's not easy. I get it but I'm so glad to see you. And you know, I don't care if you sub, I don't care. I don't care about biddies. It's like, it's not about money. It's mm. about that. I care about you as a person. You're all, you come in here and despite everything you're going through, you're positive. You're, you're uplifting. You, you know, you tell me you care about me. You give me a hug and chat, which is, you know, it's just text on a screen, but I know you mean it. And I, you know, and I was just so glad to see her. And it's like, those connections are really important with people. And that's, that's the reason I do this, man. Mm -hmm. I, uh, to connect with people and I've never met, I've never met her, but I, I always ask her how she is. And she tells me about her mother and she's telling me about her living situation. And, you know, she's, she's had some car issues. So like every time that I see her, you know, I try to DM her on discord and I, you know, when she shows up in chat, it's just the fact that she's still so kind and caring and she doesn't let the world get her down. And she still cares about me and the people around her um, and connecting with her. It's just, uh, you know, it got the best of me, but it's like, that's, that's why I do this is to be, you know, to connect with those people. And to me, they're, they're not a number. They're not just a viewer. They've become friends. They're people that I care about in my life. And when they suffer, I suffer. Um, you know, I'm, I can be a very empathetic person. And, um, you know, sometimes it's just, it hits you hard and you want these people to understand that you want them to know that there's somebody there for them. And that, um, you know, some of these, some people don't want to, you know, therapy is like, a four bad four letter word, right? Like people don't want to even talk about, even think about going to therapy or say the T word or whatever the, whatever the hell. Yeah. Um, but to be a form of therapy almost for them. Um, and again, that's not really what I am, but to be an outlet for them to, for emotion and a connection for them so that they know somebody cares about them like that, that is validation for me. And, 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 and in many ways it's very selfish because <laughs> it's giving me a purpose and I'm, and I'm getting joy from it, but like there's nothing wrong with there's nothing <laughs> wrong with selfish there's yeah it's nothing it's wrong with like selfish. it's weird it's it's selfish but it's not self-serving right it's selfish because it gives me a feeling but it's it's really about them and um 
you know, I had a conversation with somebody last night and uh, somebody who is uh, attempting to, uh, who wants to be involved with EQX more, who currently is not. And they, you know, they were crying like I was just as I kind of go. Um, but, and, and I could see the tears in their eyes and I just understood that they, like, they cared about people. He, they had a very similar message to what I'm saying now. And I'm like, man, that's why I want, you know, that's why you and I are such, you know, or that's why that person and I connect mm. because they feel the same way. They, you know, sometimes they don't understand when all these people show up and just come talk to them, but it's become an outlet. It's become a safe place for them. Um, and uh, we care about these people, you know, when we're on the platform, if you're here and I know you do and, and, you know, but and maybe not the, the, the big streamers of the world, but there are a lot of us out here who are doing this because we care about the people that show up. And when they don't show up, we worry about them. We message them. We check on them. We yeah. ask how their cats are. We ask, you know, how their mom is, you know, but how was your week at work? I really want to know those things. I really want to know how you are as a person. <laughs> it can be really weird. I mean, I think this is probably, uh, we probably have the same reason people come back to us. is probably the same reason, which is we remember who they are. And I think there's so many people who have no fucking clue who comes in. They come in, they'll sub, they might, they might be going to go, oh, hey, because they remember the name and go, hey, hey, how you doing? And that's it. Yeah. Whereas yeah. we'll go, oh, hey, <laughs> how's, 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 the, uh, how's the trip go down to uh, um, Austin? How did the, you know, how yes. did the move over yes. to Germany? You know, yeah. um, it's, it's something that a lot of people don't do. You know, I only found out yesterday, and this, I still can't believe, this is just unbelievable, but... Um, Germany I get a lot of people from Germany that come into my chat and I get I get people from all over like I've got followers in India Indonesia Australia like it's not sure it's not unusual to get from all over um but my my biggest three countries are UK US and Germany and I was there going but like why Germany like I know that your your ability to speak English is better maybe you're using me to learn English fair enough you know I have a yeah. I have a voice that you can understand that you know sure. but um I found out apparently and obviously it's anecdotal, but apparently the um, vast majority of German uh, streamers, if you go on there and say anything about mental health, like not like if they don't seem to use the tags, but like if they just go in and just go, I'm having a bad day, which isn't even like there's not there's nothing you know, there's nothing about that. Apparently they will ban them. Hmm. German streamers have a, a tendency to ban people if they mention mental health and basically just going to go that doesn't belong on Twitch. And that's why they've um, a lot of German, um, you know, people that are suffering, German uh, viewers have started looking for American, uh, oh. Australian and English people because they can speak English. They're looking right. for the bigger countries that they know have better mental health. And they've started looking for them. And it is, is amazing. The amount of times I have to continually say to people, don't apologize for saying, you know, bear in mind, I am a mental health stream up for the challenge is what I am does not game it is mental yeah. health and i still have people that come in and go i'm sorry for telling you all this and i'm like i'm sorry that's the whole point <laughs> like, yeah and, and it's amazing i'm sorry for for dumping this i'm like well firstly i have an issue with that you know that fucking idiot twitch bring it that that person you know exactly who you fucking are that said about that as far as i'm concerned you killed someone um anybody that says you know trauma dumping and all this bullshit fuck right off if your if your immediate thing is to if somebody comes in and says they're suicidal or something like that and your immediate thing is to have a go at them because of how everyone else feels fuck you as someone you don't expect someone in trauma to act like they're not all you've done is killed someone and that's straight up i don't fucking care that person on there that got praised for that fuck you anyway um the the, the thing with um with a lot of it is that um people are still so are still in the mindset of like yeah but other streamers don't like me saying it and i'm like yeah, but that's not what you're here for. Like, that's not me. That's yeah. not some other streamers. You know, if, if I go into other things, it's it's really weird because I will go into, and I always find it funny because you said it yourself, and I have a, another person. I um the the real Mick uh, Vic uh, yeah, the real Mick Flair, who is someone in uh, Liverpool in in the UK, who I I've raided into a couple of times now. Literally, will continue to say, "I'm not I'm not a mental health streamer." Like, I'm so, sorry, guys. I'm not I'm not this and that. I'm like, dude. Like if I compare you to some of the actual mental mental health streamers, um, you're way more. Like I literally see you on your stream. He's a gamer. He, there's no tag about mental health whatsoever. But he's a gamer who literally will go, "Hey, dude, you okay? We'll, we'll talk on Discord later on. You're right. Okay, make sure if you're okay, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like there's conversations. It's not yeah. just something else. And even some in some of the bigger streamers, people like um, Mini Minter. Uh, he's one of the side men. He is. I, I don't watch many of the side men on Twitch anyway. 
but I've seen him when something happens, he will literally stop and talk to people. Like he has thousands of people talking at once and he'll yeah. pick it out. And there are, it's amazing. There are people out there, but people get so used to these bullshitters. Um, and then they kind of think they have to apologize for being them. And I think, like I yeah. say, the, the reason that people go back to certain streamers is because they know who they are. It's a bit like we were saying about, um, about um, making friends on Twitch. And it's, yeah. you start to become trusted because if, if there's someone, it's like if you go to a pub, if you find, um, if, you know, if you find, I don't know the idea of a local is a thing in America, but like you have your local pub here. It is the pub you always go to and they yeah. know who you are. It's sure. cheers. It's cheers. It's cheers. That's, that's, it. <laughs> it's, that's the thing. If like you go back there because when you turn up, it's like norm it's that yeah, they know who you right. are they know yeah. where you've been they know what your job is they know what right. you, you know and that's the thing of like people come in and i i kind of almost have a running joke because there's two people in my chat that i continually mistake each um each other's nationality the other way around so i immediately go german shit no you're from hungary sorry sorry <laughs> and they'll just laugh because they, yeah. they're like yeah well you fucking still know where i'm from like that's <laughs> yeah um it, it's it's really weird but it, it's something that i don't think we find many other places and your your connection and the fact that you've you know you had someone come in and you're like oh, hey it's good to see you i think the reason they even came in in the first place you know it may have been they may have taken a long trip away from from twitch or whatever like that but yeah. the whole reason they came back was because of the fact that they knew when they came back you'd be like hey how have you been yeah. and that's the thing and you, you get people like that i mean i've like i said i've had those two those two women who um have messaged me and come into chat after and said yeah I've, I've got away from the guy I, you know i'm yeah. i'm safe now thank you and it's just like f you know fuck. i mean with one of them i was aware of what was going on the other one right. i wasn't and they just came back and just went yeah I, I came on because it was somewhere to it was it was escapism it was somewhere to come on to that i knew i wasn't just going to be given platitudes because obviously yeah. that's what they'd especially with abusive partner that's all they'd had you right. know, their mates have probably been going, yeah, it's going to be all right. He won't hit you next or some bullshit. And I'm there yeah. just talking normally. And yeah. then it was the, the fact that um, she knew it was her way of escaping. And then out of the blue, just messaged me and said, you know, this is what was going on. And I'm away from it now. I was like, what the fuck? But the yeah. fact that I knew anything about them. And uh, it's amazing the, the connection and the, the impact you can have in certain ways that I don't think people really understand. Um, you know, I've said it before. Uh, I've, so I get the, one of the reasons I didn't kill myself is Twitch. It's people on Twitch. It's fucking yeah. gamers on Twitch. Yeah. You know, at least three of the five people who I call my OGs, my OGs are the people that saved me. At least three of them were gamers. Like they were just fucking gaming. Yeah. But they were like, hey, how you doing? And every time I go back in, hey, up, how are you, man? How are you? How's it going? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like I'm, there's a connection and the fact that they even call you and i know it sounds stupid it will sound stupid to, to so many people but even the fact that they don't call so some streamers will call everyone their friend when they come in but the, these people won't but then they'll go he's a really good friend going you know and it's there's just something about it the way they talk about when you're on there it's like yeah like i i, me I message these people on on, in, on instagram i like some of them know where i fucking live like I have friends I know in real life that don't know where I fucking live because so, <laughs> right. so, yeah. I've just moved. So it's, it's, for me, it was a connection. I mean, I was at my lowest point. I've mentioned it in different podcasts, so it doesn't really matter. You know, my wife passed away and then soon after the pandemic happened and then that was it for me. And I was at the lowest I've ever been. There's, there, I haven't been lower than that because there's, there's nothing that would get me as low as that. And so I was done. Like there wasn't, there wasn't a fucking discussion. I was done. I literally planned out nine days. I'm done. And then I came across these five channels on Twitch. Two of them were just chatting. Three of them were gamers. And just the fact, and I've always said, they made me smile at a time when I couldn't. And it's that connection that you just suddenly like, yeah, these are, these are good. I mean, two of those channels don't really stream anymore. They, they've gone, but I still know the people. Yeah. I still connect. You know, how did they what, how did they make you smile well what, what was it about them that made you i don't like, even know endeared you do you don't remember even know like for all different reasons as well like they they were not they weren't playing the same game they weren't yeah. acting the same way they're not from the same country i mean one of them's from belgium um one of them is from canada one of them's american like they're not even from not from the same country they're not the same you know they're not all male or not all female they're yeah. not like nothing about them makes them the same person right um you know it's not that they're all white or they're all black nothing sure. like all different and yet one of them 
is now a trustee on the mental health charity that I created. That's like awesome. one of those people is now of the channel, one of the defunct channels. So the channels that went away is now a trustee on my charity and is a mod on my, on, uh, on my Twitch channel. And I think that's the connection that people don't realize is that literally this is someone that I have never met in real life. I've never met them. I've met some people I know, yeah. but I've never met them. And yet I have, I trust them enough to start a mental health channel. They are the treasurer of my mental health charity. Trust them enough for the money, <laughs> which you know, is important. Exactly. And they, you know, they've been on this podcast before. Um, they, they are, um, um, they're, they're a mod for me and I connect with them. everything like that of a channel that doesn't exist anymore. There's nothing. Uh, cause I, I know for some people it could be like, people could be like, oh yeah, but you know, they're helping you and you're there. No, cause they, they can't. Look, <laughs> they're just yeah. they're there because I want them to fucking be there because they're yeah. one of those channels that gave me that connection when I first went on. Um, it's similar, like similar to yourself. It's somebody coming onto your channel when you're, when you're gaming and having that connection was the same as what I was. Cause I was, yeah. I was, I'm not like, I'm not a gamer, whether I game or not, does not make me a gamer. <laughs> sure. And I, that's not me. Like I, I stopped gaming um, until last weekend, 26 years ago, 20 long. Actually, I started, I stopped gaming longer ago than the person I'm talking about has been alive. <laughs> um, and so there wasn't an, it wasn't a connection of, of like, Oh, I want to go and see this person game. Like, I don't fucking, yeah. King of shit. I never, wa I never watch anyone game. I have fuck all idea what's going on in your games at the moment. I know there's something about Japanese and there was a picture of a dragon. That's all I remember because right. I'm not watching it for that. And I don't know that about the things. I'm, I'm connected with the person. I think that's right. what is, was missed. And the game is just a kind of background noise. Um, but that's, that's the thing that a lot of people have a connection. I don't think they really realize. Yeah. And yeah. people don't know just how much of an impact these things, this gaming online, you know, oh, well, you're gaming online. What's that going to do any for you? What's this? It's like, yeah, but you have no fucking idea of the impact. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I kind of blathered there for a little bit. <laughs> no, you're, no, you're good. No, no. I mean, you're exactly right. Like, uh, and even now as I connect with people online and as I meet people, right. And I, uh, whether they're streamers or not, and I guess in this case of the streamers, like if I go to their channel, I really don't, I'm like, there might be a game I'd be, I'd be interested in that they're playing. Right. Um, but I really don't give a shit about the game. I really don't. Um, they could be playing, you know, I'm going to be playing like hello kitty probably in about two weeks with, with my channel. Um, and people are not going to show up to see me play that game. Now they'll see me make an ass of myself, but it's not the game. It's me playing the game. Right. And it's the same way for them. Like, I don't care what game you're playing. Um, the game is not going to save you if you're a piece of shit person. Like I don't, I'm not going to come back just because you're playing a game that, that I like. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you are an amazing person and you're playing a piece of shit game, I will come back to you every time. It doesn't matter to me. I, I, again, I want to know that uh, you are real, especially just like, I want to, I want to have that feeling of that connection. Like I want people to have with me, but I want to know you're real. Uh, I want to know your intentions are pure, right? Like there's nothing wrong with wanting to have a full-time content creation job. That's cool. Mm. But when you do it at the expense of like other people's mental health or finances, or where they become objects in your little Ponzi scheme to the top, um, that's when I have an issue with that. Right. Um, just yeah that's a totally different conversation but yeah um no it's 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 the connection it's the person right and then even people will ask me because i've you know started to grow as a streamer you know what is it about what you're doing that i can replicate or how can i be as big as you or how can i be like you mm. um and every every time we talk about the game situation i go the game doesn't matter man like it, it doesn't matter it's people knowing that you care about them. It's people tr trusting you. It's, it's the connections you make. It's the relationships that you build. That's that. If you want to grow as a streamer, um, that's how you do it. Like, and, and you're, if you're, if you're truly about that, you're going to be doing some good along the way, which is, I think is the most important part. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've just, uh, I mentioned about the, the mental health charity, three of the people from that are, um, I've met through Twitch. One of them is a former student of mine. Um, another one is a, a martial arts colleague of mine. Um, and, uh, the other two as well as myself are, are streamers. One of them is the person that helped me. Another one is another mental health streamer. Um, and that's come out of Twitch. There's a connection and everything that's come out of that, that has mm -hmm. now created 
yeah. literal mental health charity that is now backed by an international cryptocurrency. Awesome. And like that, and that happened because of Twitch. Right. They were literally talking about the the, the cryptocurrency and you know the shitty market and everything. And um, they were like, should we go and raid someone? Because they were doing it on Twitch. And they were like, hey, what about this guy? And like, I suddenly got a shitload of people on my channel one day when I was talking about, oh yeah, I'm thinking about starting this charity. It's going to be starting. Um, and they were like, how can we help? Like, what? That's awesome. And it, you know, this is, this is, they, this is a, this is a charity. This is a cryptocurrency that's literally being created for, um, for mental health. That's what they do. They help that. They've given away like a quarter of a million dollars um, to charities before. And I'm like, it's amazing. And they've just turned up and they've turned up because of Twitch. And, you know, this is, and the charities come out of Twitch. You know, we've, we've, and you're saying about um, things earlier, you're saying that you're not therapy. I kind of tend to disagree. And that's along with what I say with, um, with the charity is, um, you know, people hear therapy, therapeutic, things like that, and they think of Freud. That's, that's what people have in their head. Fair. They think of Freud, they think of, uh, because what they think of generally, if they're going to, even in, in, in um, like popular culture, they'll think of Frasier and Frasier is a Freudian fucking psychologist. That's what he is in the show. Literally. <laughs> so yeah. it's, that's what they have in their mind. So um, when, when we're there just going, no, 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 actually with the charity, what we're going to do is we've got um, videos up that help introduce you into gaming. You know, we've got uh, someone we, we both know is going to be doing that for me. We, we've got videos that introduce you into exercise, introduce you into music. We've even had somebody compose music from my channel they are they are literally a viewer who said look i compute i compose music um i'm a pianist and i was like bring it and they composed yeah. they've composed four pieces go on to chat um, and they're literally the pieces are there for people to use they're public access for people to use for their meditations um and i think therapy is whatever is therapeutic and whatever is sure. helpful to you so yeah. you know it doesn't matter whether somebody has called it therapy it is by it can be by definition therapeutic playing a board sure. playing monopoly it might rage you the fuck out but it might also be massively therapeutic right so yeah. like we have i have someone coming on to help people introduce them to um um onto board games how to get into board games so and that is those are exclusive videos on the charity because that's part of what we're doing and then we're going to you know branch off onto doing um you know in real life stuff and everything like that but i think people can find something online and find a lot of solace so I don't know if I agree that you're not therapy. You may not be a therapist, but you yes. may be therapy. Yeah, fair. That's I think I think that, that was my uh, intention with that statement. Was is, <laughs> I don't want to say I get like you know I don't want to sound like I am a licensed professional or that I um, I'm advocating that you know people should come to me and I'm going to give them the life advice that's going to fix their life. Um, but I would I will admit that yeah there's there's a therapeutic effect to the relationships that I have and that people are you know again like it's just crazy that people will be like yeah man I. There are people that just lurk and never say a thing in my channel. Yeah, I don't even know they're there. And uh, today somebody redeemed like ASMR. I, I hate my voice, by the way. And I think most people, you know, unless you have a spectacular voice one way or the other, they don't like their speaking voice. I don't like my speaking voice. But somebody redeemed ASMR and they're like, this is, this, like, this is chill. Like you're just kind of whispering and like I could go to sleep right now. And I'm just like, what is going on in this channel? Um, but it's, it's, it's it's another of those, those things that just makes me feel like, Hey, if I, if I can provide this space, um, I don't say the service, but this, this place where people can, you know, be themselves. If you just come and lurk, whether that's just to support me or because like the vibes in the channel is fun or good, or, you know, you, the people's and people say this all the time and it's probably overused, but it's true. Hmm. Um, time, right. The time that you spend with somebody is invaluable. The time that you have is invaluable. So you need to use your time wisely and you need to respect other people's time, right? Mm -hmm. If I had showed up for this podcast at half an hour late, that would be, you know, I would expect you to be mad. Uh, I would expect you to tell me off because this is time together um, that you can't get back. So for, for me to be able to stream and there be 30 plus people in a channel, like if I turned around and had 30 people in this room, this room would be full. Yeah. People don't understand that. Like even 10 people in a room with you, um, if there was 10 people standing behind you looking over your back while you were playing a game, just think of it that way. That's insane. Absolutely. I mean, people actually forget about that as well when they're, when they're very small streamers, you know, um, when you're really, really, and you're just starting out and you know, the, the whole thing of I've got to find my first three regular viewers to be there every time, or I've got to have one decent one. And it's like, yeah, but 
let's say you've got two people watching you. There's two people who out of um, 10 million streamers, they've gone, I'm going to hang out with you. It's yep. like, what the fuck? Like if you just, if you, if you had, I mean, that is a sixth of the UK. That's a 30th of the US. If you had like one in, one in, um, thir- uh, yeah, one thirtieth, one three. I don't fucking know. But, um, <laughs> yes. but like in the UK, which one six? So if if every like time you had one in six people, one in six people was just like, hey, how you doing? Uh, how you doing? Where, 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 hang out. Like you'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Like yeah. why? Why me? Why? Why am I? Why am I important? But people, unfortunately, we've got into this idea of numbers, which I, I think gets dodgy. Your camera has gone so blurry. I'm just gonna say. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm just. I know there's people on um, listening on Spotify or, or Amazon that have no idea, but there we go. Um, but yeah, it's it is it is weird for the smaller streamers that it does get like that. But yeah, it's, it is absolutely. I mean, I've because of my interactions and and, and now subsequent study, I'm writing a my a, a course on um, on practicing as a as a basically a teaching course, a practitioner's course in mindfulness, which okay. is, is being accepted. It's currently going through acceptance from international bodies. That couldn't have happened without Twitch. One, I wouldn't have had the fucking experience. I wouldn't have been able to have that interaction, but sure. it's amazing. And the communities that build around you, I think are really important as well, because it isn't just the streamer. It's the fact that then everyone talks to each other. And yeah. we've had times where there's been someone in my chat who's just like, like, I'm, 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 I'm going tomorrow. Or, or, you know, those kind of comments. And the entire chat has just gone, no, we love you. You know, it's so even, you know, it's just everyone in there just going, no, come on, what yeah. talk about it. What do you need? Right. To, and that person then come back and they've kept yeah. coming back and they're fine. Right. And it's, it's like the, you can see, I think around it, that communities start to be built up. And like you were saying before, communities can be really important on Twitch because communities are the thing that, that runs your channel really. I mean, if you're even, you know, I, I read every single message. That's mm-hmm. one thing that people know about me is I read every single message that's in my right. chat. Um, I'm, I'm just waiting for that one day that some bastard raised me with like a thousand or something because I've, I've had people that I mod for one person I mod for got raided by 3,000 people on their game and that I'm her only mod and I was there going <laughs> fuck uh, uh, yeah. I'm waiting for that day and I'm fucked yeah. but um, that is one thing I do and even, even for me when I read every single message it, I still have my, my um, community the ones that are there going in, in between going, hey, are you okay? Because I can see them. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah, read yeah. them out loud. I don't read them, but I do see that people are just going, look, if you need, if you need to talk, I'm here as well. You know, up's here, but yeah. we're all here. Everyone's here. Yeah. How, you know, why don't we, why don't we connect on this? You know, I've got one person that comes to my chat that now calls two other people in the chat, mum. She's like, hey, mums, how are you? How are you doing? Because they kind of took her under the wing. So it's, I think it's, it's really good that you get that connection through Twitch. And it's yeah. just, it's, it's so important. Um, it can be, uh, it can be even as simple like you, know, you mentioned, like somebody said, you know, I'm going to be gone tomorrow. But even something the less extreme than that is like when somebody comes in, they're just like, yeah, I'm having a bad day. And then, you know, your whole chat is like, oh, they, you know, exclamation point hug or like, you know, they engage with that person. And like for your chat to do that, um, like you said, it's the community you build. It's the people you keep around you. It's like that old adage, you know, you are the uh, the sum of the five closest people to you or whatever. Um, it's similar to that. And whereas your channel is the sum of the, the individuals that you allow to be there and the mentality that you uh, promote within the channel, right? So, um, you know, you want to have that, you should want to have a channel where all people are welcomed and that your chat is taking care of each other, right? Because you're fostering that, um, that vibe ugh, uh, <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is quite funny for, for, for my chat um, specifically it gets really weird. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm a monkey in a suit. That's, that's how I see myself um, because yeah, I've got the incense in the background. I've got my, you know, my, my Buddha thing and everything like that. And, and I've got the mental health tags. So people come in and I think they see the blood and that they, the trolls come in specifically to be like, oh, we can troll this guy easy. Cause he's going to be everything like that. And then they come in and I'm like, Oh really? Okay, <laughs> just completely lay into them, and then because I've said to my mods, like, no, let me let me deal with them before yeah. you block them. Don't fucking block them yet. <laughs> and it's now got to a point. Actually, it's it's um because I think that the point of a lot of uh, trolls, especially in a mental health chat, or when someone's down or whatever, you know, because even uh, on on your chat, you you might have one troll that goes, oh well, I'm glad you're having a bad day, or whatever like that. Whereas with mine, obviously the aim is to make people feel bad. But what actually happens is they'll say something and then all of my child go, nah, uh-oh, 
Uh, there's like up's going to get to you in a minute. That's the response. Then right. they're not. They don't give a shit about you. They're more. Yeah. They're more waiting for my fucking response to you. Right. And that's what it's turned into now. It's it's a community that when they see a troll, they're not scared of the troll. And that's that's really nice that it's people don't people don't take it that way anymore. I think at the beginning they're like, oh god, there's a troll. Can we get rid of it? Whereas now it's just like no. Up will deal with the troll. We don't have to worry. <laughs> Fuck them. Let's just keep chatting. And no yeah. one pays any attention, which is <laughs> amazing because that's the easiest way to get rid of trolls most of the time anyway, is just like when they say something and you're, you don't even respond to them, like that people's response is like, yeah, we'll, it's, ba it's basically the, the idea of like when you're a kid, when your mum says, wait for your dad to come home. It's that's yeah. basically what my chat did. It's, it's that kind of response, which is, which is quite nice. And obviously I have um, in, in my channel, when, when you have people coming in saying they have a bad day or whatever, like you said with yours, you have your your fam your your um your entire chat kind of goes into that. I have a word um, that's banned on my on my chat, which most people get confused about, and most people think because I ca we call it the F word, and everyone goes, oh, it's got, oh oh oh, he doesn't allow swearing in here. But I've heard him say fuck. <laughs> like, no, 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 it's the word fine. I was like yeah. because no one says the word fine when they mean it. No one yeah. is really fine. And what I want is I want detail. Right. what is actually going on and it really confuses people like you say what, um, that, that's the big difference i think between a lot of people who want actual connection and everyone else is that i'm there going, no, no 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 how are you actually doing because people will get confused and they'll be like i'm saying something and your auto mod is picking it up I'm like, what's going on i'm like you said you were fine didn't you i'm like no yeah. how are you actually and they're like yeah. oh um oh i guess actually and you know because yeah. it's even it's even people that, are, that would would respond just going oh yeah i'm fine and not even really realize and then they right. suddenly go oh actually you know what no um yeah i've had a bit of a sh shit day actually um you know yeah. and they start to discuss things it actually turns into a conversation which is uh, something that I, I i don't see enough of i, I do sure. see on certain chats like i i yeah. know obviously i know that certain chats i can i can go into i can go into yours i can go into steve's i can go into to, to deal through i can go you know yeah. there's certain ones i can go into that i know like if somebody says they're doing shit you guys may not be able to properly respond to them but you'll be but you'll still be able to respond to them if you know what i mean there'll yeah, be yeah there's, there's still there's still something there you know right and that's something that not every chat has i mean the one that i i, I tried to do a reaction video for youtube a while ago um and i got so irritated by a twitch streamer um and my rant was so long that when i watched it back i, just wrote, I can't put it on there and it was so to pop him because that okay. was silly fucking cunt um when he had someone donate to him and say, look, I've just gone through a really bad break. Have you got any advice? His response, instead of going, even if you don't know what you're doing, I mean, a normal response would be like, I'm, I'm sorry about that, man. I'm, I hope you're doing okay. I, I don't know if I can help you, but like, keep your chin up. Whatever. Like, if you haven't got yeah, advice, sure. whatever. Because the guy's just giving you like $20 or whatever. So the pop in just went, I don't know who you are, man, but thanks for the money. I, I, the fuck? The fuck? That, like, I don't, what the fuck is that? I don't care. Even if you're a complete piece of shit, you'd have thought he'd be able to make something up. Like, what the fuck is that? And this guy has like 2 million people following him on Twitch. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I, it doesn't surprise me now when sometimes people will go, come into even a mental health channel and go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm telling you about stuff. And it's like, yeah. what? Yeah. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't understand the lack of empathy and it, and it kind of, um, you know, and even just the lack of effort in connection, right? Because like you don't even have to have tons of empathy and, and feel bad per se, but it's, it's acknowledgement, it's, um, it's advice or just like, the acknowledgement, I guess, really. Yeah. Of, uh, you're like, saying I'm hey, man, sorry, man. You know, <laughs> right? Like the fucking sucks, bro. Like, <laughs> um, like that, just even that would be terrible. Just a little bit of that connection and empathy. And it's sad that that same mentality is the same reason why, you know, I don't want to get onto this because it's a totally different subject, but we talk about marginalized creators and on mm. um, Twitch, those big streamers didn't do anything. They don't do anything to really put the pressure on the Twitch to mm. change things. Right. That's the only way that we're going to get some kind of uh, quicker change or tool or whatever it is that we need to help protect marginalized streamers on, on the platform is like financially we need, we need them to hit it where it, where it hurts you know, take the subs away, take the viewers away, whatever it is. But even if all of the small, quote unquote, small streamers on Twitch were not there, they'd still have like 88% of the revenue or something ridiculous like that with the big streamers. So, you know, uh, that same mentality for me is just, I think the reason why they don't do enough. And I, I'm very frustrated by that. That's a totally different chat though. I, yeah, think. I mean, it's, it is that, that, that whole thing was, uh, was weird for me anyway, because I don't um, obviously uh, of the challenge tells people off if they give money 
Um, so <laughs> it's it was weird because I'm like, I am no revenue for Twitch. I'm nothing. If I, you know, that there's there's no change. I I've literally ended streams when people giving me money before. Yes. So it's 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 strange for that. That was a very strange um, conversation. But um, and that that that's the thing. Twitch is Twitch should probably go offline for a year and still still have the money. I mean, people forget it's owned by Amazon. It's owned by Jeff Bezos. The guy went to space because he was bored. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Um, that, that's the thing. And it is it is the case that a lot of a lot of the big um, streamers need to do more. Um, it's there is no there is no interaction because there's no there's no bottom line for them. You know, there's no. It's not the case of like they they don't need to care, and that's the problem. That there's nothing coming back on them. Like YouTube's gone too far the other way, because um, YouTube like with people like KSI, there was a kid falling over, and then he got banned for two weeks from the thing. Yeah, I heard. I heard the TOS over there is very very strict. It's like a kid fell over. You fucking idiot. Yeah. That's not yeah. child endangerment. He laughed yeah. because a kid fell over. That's just English fucking humor. That's not child endangerment. It already fucking right. happened. Like right. it already happened. He got there with a lighter to some kid's face. You fucking idiot yes this is kind of on youtube how you doing fuck you <laughs> um like yeah and this is the thing and i think this is the, the the difference and this is the the problem that we've money has become the driving force for a lot of people and that's why um i think it's important when i, when I say about bringing you on as well is that it isn't the gaming is the driving force for you and i think that's that's the thing whereas yeah. and for me i've always said if twitch bans me fuck him i'll go into youtube if youtube ban me fuck him i'll go onto twitter twitter ban me fuck him okay at the end of the day, I can walk into that street and shout like, I don't fucking care. I do not care. And that's, I think, what um, I think with other creators on Twitch and other, other streamers have. I don't this is why, again, it's the monkey in the suit. They don't know where to place me because I don't fit yeah. because I don't care. Yeah. And it's just like that because there's always a, there's always a sanction against certain things. And I'm just going, fuck, go for it. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. All right. Fuck you. Just carry on. Yeah. Like, and right. that, that's the, that's the thing. I, I wish that money wasn't the driver for so many people, because if driver, if it wasn't, I think we'd have more people like um, yourself, me, um, and the other people we've mentioned, because they, it'd be like, you know, I just want a game or I just want to share yeah. that. Right. That would be the driving force. Soda yeah. popping would, would have fucked off. Um, you know, and we'd have people, we'd still have big creators because we'd still have people like, um, as I said, mini minter, mini minter yeah. is a fucking multimillionaire because of YouTube, not Twitch. Like he doesn't need to be on Twitch. He's on there because he likes gaming. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Like, because I always have when people, yeah, but he's a multi, he's a multi I'm like, yeah. And he was before Twitch. Like, he made millions before he even realized Twitch existed. Like, he right. could retire now at 28 and no one would fucking know. He wouldn't notice for the rest of his life. Like, it's Vic, um, Vic Star. Um, uh, Vic, he, same thing. Like, he's, he's won money through, um, through COD. I'm not a gamer, guys. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> probably, um, probably right. But he like he won like the three P when when they were doing the tournaments. Um, and he's just won. He's just um bought his his mansion. Like it's a fucking. It, it was quite funny because they did the side men did a video one week of like um of people that supposedly didn't know who they are. And I don't necessarily believe that because they also did a video afterwards where they were like, oh yeah, but I've seen you all over the place to KSI. I'm like, so you do know that they're fucking famous and clearly have money then, you yeah. lying bastards. But they were like, they went to Vic, who obviously is one of the younger ones and just went, oh yeah, but he doesn't look old enough to have made money. And everyone's taking the mick because literally a week later, it's him opening up these like 12 foot doors going, oh my welcome God. to my new house. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> like, and I mean, he made money before Twitch, but he still, yeah. so it's, that's the thing. It's, it's not, it's not a case of, these people need to do it. So some of the big creators would still be there. You'd still yeah. have some huge people on there that would still be around. Even if you said to them, yeah, we're not going to give you anything or we will give you a pound if, if like every other person likes you or whatever the fuck it is. Like, yeah, there'd still be people there. You, you, you know, we, we, we went from 3.5 to 10 million um, streamers during COVID um, during the pandemic. That's what it changed to. And yeah. some of them became partners and became massive. I mean, um Tommy in it for instance Tommy in it is like massive on Twitch but he yeah. also survives from Minecraft on on YouTube he has 10 yeah. million subscribers on YouTube yeah. he doesn't need Twitch so yeah. it's it's one of those things that I think Twitch haven't um realized yet and a lot of people haven't realized is that actually yeah they do need to do better I know we went into a different subject there but I do think it is on I do think it's still on topic yeah. of the idea of gaming and money and Twitch just yeah. everything is the same thing right. because yeah 
it is too based in one thing. And I think when that becomes it, then that can also affect people's mental health. Right. Because when people, because I know, I know some people, I know some people that we both know that have come, maybe love um, gaming, came onto Twitch, then have become full-time creators and now are stuck because they don't know what to do because what if it all goes down the, down the shit? And now their mental health is now affected again. Right. Where it was being helped by it. It's now, that's why one of the questions I asked earlier was what happens if it all goes away? Because yeah. for some people, it destroys them. It's, it's it, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting to see who kind of falls in that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, the more I think about it, like it just, there's other platforms, there's other, there's other ways to connect. And, you know, even if I had to stream through discord to people and connect with them that way and drive the traffic there, mm. where they can chat either audio or, you know, through text or whatever, um, you know, because, you know, so one of the things that I do for my community is we do like anime night, and we do movie nights and things like that, too. And that's just another outlet, another place where they can come feel safe is that discord, you know, we've got sections, we've got sections on, uh, philosophical conversations, sections on where they share art. Like we, my goal is really just to have that place uh, where I also am comfortable, right? Whether that's my channel or the Discord, um, it's just it's nice. It is an escape in many ways, but it's also a creative outlet. It's a way to, um, be, I mean, being yourself is it's weird to say that I guess a little bit because like you're yourself every day, right? But um, we're in a world that doesn't that doesn't reward you for being yourself right, right so. you just you don't necessarily have the way the ability to express yourself day-to-day -day life you go to work you do this you do that you come home you take care of your you know, take care of your family you take care of yourself but like having a spot where you can be like hey i drew this and then for people to be like man that's really great artwork like i've got some really great artists in the discord or i wrote this like here's a poem or here's a story i wrote and you're just like man that's fantastic you should continue on that idea or can I offer you some, can I offer you some criticism? I see this, I see this, you know, just this, this part feels funny to me. Like just having that space and, um, you know, especially too, as like, as, as pagans and as people who are non, non-Christians, um, you know, there's a lot of those individuals who are in my community who, you know, we have these conversations about like, I'm, I'm afraid to tell my parents I'm not a Christian or that I don't believe in Christianity when they're such diehard Christians. Mm -hmm. And so like, there's just that, there's just so many different avenues and, discussions to be had and connections to be made that it just you know uh, it's crazy it's, it's actually really really crazy um and I, I didn't consider any of that before i turned on that stupid ass computer and decided <laughs> to play some league of legends one you know one day so it's yeah. um yeah it, it is it is so weird i mean the the culture shock for for so many people and i i think i've brought a lot of culture shock to, to people about the british way of doing things because it's even the wording like the words we use and just like we've had discussions about things i've had discussions with people and they're just like oh we're like that that would be horrendous in in america i'm like yeah but then this was that it's um um i think with mental health as well it's like yeah but unless you understand then you're just like the idea of um therapy for instance in america therapy is a normal part of life that's it you said that to somebody in england they'd be like what the fuck is the matter with you like yeah what do you mean you go to therapy all the time? What's wrong with you? What are you, you know, what's going on? Like, it would yeah. be a weird ass fucking thing. Like, if you said, maybe nowadays you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I gotta, I've got some counseling. And they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But it would still be, it's still not in it. Whereas in America, it's like completely normal. So even simple things like that, there is, there's no understanding. So I find it really funny because I've had these discussions where people go and they assume things because you both speak English. And like, yeah. But like the way I say things, even the comment you made there about coming out as, as not being Christian, like that wouldn't be a thing here. No one yeah. would give a flying shit. Yeah. I don't know in some places in, in America, it would be like, you're the worst thing since the fucking devil, you know? Right. But, but they made a mick, a take the mick out of it in Family Guy. Mm -hmm. When Brian actually admits he's an atheist, he's like, yeah, but you yeah. guys knew I didn't believe in God. It's like, yeah, but that, but you're an atheist. Like, whereas in the UK, it would almost be weirder to be Christian. Like I'm sure. not saying that there aren't Christians out there. My brother's a Methodist minister, but it's like, it's not, a, it's not a thing. It's not, yeah. it's not seen as a, any part of your, like if, for instance, if we had like in America, there's no chance in fucking hell you get, not to say that you haven't had a president that was, but there's no way you would have an openly atheist president. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure you've had them. Yeah. um but i can probably name them your last yeah. one being one of them. 
But um, but the, the fact is, in, in England, no one would give a shit. Like, in yeah. fact, in fact, Tim Ferron, Ferron, Farron, Tim Farron of the Liberal Democrats basically got taken out as a leader of the party because of the fact that he was Christian. Because of people going, you're voting on gay rights and your Christian beliefs are telling you you have to vote one way. No, fuck off. And I mean, yeah. I've met Tim Farron. He's actually a really nice guy and he used to abstain. He didn't, he never voted against any of that stuff. But even the, the suggestion that he might be doing it, no, fuck off. And <laughs> even simple things like that that are a baseline of people's morality is completely different for the country. And I think without Twitch and without these kind of things, people wouldn't know that. And that's why I think mental health um, comes across really weirdly because people like the for a lot of people especially like la in the uk the way that mental health is dealt with in america is the most fucking pathetic way in the, in the world <laughs> it's like it's so like so it, we still have a very kind of matey culture like if you mm. the more you insult someone and i know you have it to a point in america but um probably more in the south than anywhere else but like the more you insult someone over here that that guy's your best mate like right. that's it I think there's a comedian called Reginald D. Hunter. Um, mm. he's, he's American, but he's, he's, he lives over here now. And he's always said that the biggest thing was that in, in America, you in, introduce your mates like, hey, this is Brad, he's a really nice guy. And in England, you're like, hey, this is Dave, bit of a twat. And like, that's, that's the difference. Like, yeah. if, if in the UK it was like, hey, this is Dave, he's a really nice guy, that would be sarcastic. <laughs> um, so like without that interaction and that kind of understanding, I think that really helps because one, it helps things like um, cultural diversity, mm. even in even our, our, our own countries, because our own countries have people from those other countries. Like right. there are American immigrants over here, there are British immigrants in America. It also helps us with mental health because mental health, we start to go, oh fuck, so this is why that doesn't make sense to you. Or this is why that's really weird to you. Yeah. Um, and you start to actually intermingle. And again, this isn't stuff that you would necessarily know unless that one day that you turned on your, your thing to play Apex, whatever it was. And the one day that some people on Twitch said, turn the fucking camera on. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's why, I mean, I literally, when I first started, I was said to people, I'm just a guy with a camera because that's literally what I was. I was, yeah. I was some guy with a, with a, a Dell 1700 um, 5000 series with a shitty camera just talking. You know, there was no one else with that kind of spec because everyone else yeah. is gaming and yeah. you can't do that on the laptop. <laughs> so it, it's, it's really weird. It's just something yeah. that, that's, that's different and new from it that I don't think we'd really know about unless we had these passions that have come out of it. And, you know, yeah. some of them, like yourself, the passion was there beforehand. And like me, it's actually come since it. Um, but it is interesting to have it in there. Yeah. Um, I think we've gone over most things. It's, you know, it's, it's basically the, the life of a, of a streamer and, and how it's affected uh, mental health and everything like that. But was there anything else that you wanted to, to add before we kind of say the final piece or anything like that? No, I just think, I think, you know, when I started streaming, you know, part of the things that I started getting into were podcasts and, you know, I've been a part of other, um, I've been a part of mental health podcasts and um, I know there's still, at least in the American sense, there's still a lot of stigma around talking about mental health and talking about depression. There's been just, you know, especially as a man, um, it, it becomes difficult for people like, you know, like it, uh, there might be people out there that would have been in a similar situation to me earlier that didn't cry, right? Because they were like, I'm a man, I can't cry. Um, we got just, I would encourage people to be open and I would encourage them to share their experiences, be, have their feelings, feel your feelings, man. Um, for a very, very long time in my life, like I was depressed and I couldn't feel anything, right. Because it was just depression all the time. And now I would just, you know, I, I am overjoyed in the relationships that I build. And I, uh, you know, despite being emotional sometimes, and you know, I, I just want to be happy or I want to be sad, or I'm just going to feel what I want to feel. So I think just encourage people to do the same thing. Don't yeah. be afraid. You know, don't just because you're a man, you can feel whatever you want. Just because you're a woman, you can feel whatever you want. You don't identify with any gender. You're transgender. It doesn't matter. Feel what you want to feel, express yourself, mm. find ways to do that in um, through your words, through your actions, um, you know, we need to remove this mental health stigma and not be afraid to have conversations around it and not be afraid to express ourselves. So I just want to make sure everybody, you know, one more word of encouragement for people to do that um, and really just build those connections, be yourself. Uh, you know, that's probably my parting, my parting yeah. response to everyone. 
I mean, I'll, I'll th- I think I'll, I'll basically just echo that. I mean, if, if people are wondering out there and they're going, yeah, but uh, you two guys are like this or your, your software, whatever, just bear in mind, both of us were tournament fighters. I think you would. Yeah, we were both tournament fighters. We're both martial artists. I'm I don't know how um, big tier is, but I'm over six. I'm six foot two broad shouldered. Yeah. I am. We are both the definition of that kind of toxic masculine world. We are that. Yeah. We are that. We are those right. guys that would would be the ones if there's, you know, I, I have a door. Uh, you don't have this in America, but I have a door supervisor license in the UK. I, I've worked the doors. Right. It, we are literally the people that are meant to not be crying. You know, we're the yeah, men. You absolutely. Know. Yeah. We're the real men. You know, is that yeah. bullshit? You know, <laughs> it looks like a fucking biker. Look at him. I mean, it's, it's I, am, I literally have friends who are bikers. Like I have a guy who, who is, um, who is, um, a previous, is a member of one of the big biking gangs. And guess where he's qualified as fucking counselor. Love the, it. Guys, the, the reason and, you know, the reason this these this bullshit from toxic masculinity exists is because of decades old stuff that it, it fucks up all of us. It doesn't help anyone apart from the very top 200 years ago. For the rest of us, you know, we are the definitions of people that shouldn't be like this. Both of us have cried on stream. Both of us have showed emotion and talked to other people about their emotions. If you need to reach out and you can't because you're from a family that's just toxic as fuck, there's Twitch. We don't know who you are. We'll know your we'll know your handle, but if you don't want to be that name, you know I have people that use their name. I have people that don't use their name. You know, on here I'm I'm Adam. I'm up for the challenge on Twitch. Nobody knows when I first went on there. It's just up. People find it weird, and I sometimes find it weird at this point to use my actual name. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you know, that's who it is. So if you need to come on to the, to Twitch and just find a random person and just watch them, just talk to them. Do that if that's the way that helps do that whatever's therapy for you is therapy um but thank you very much for joining me Tia. um Thanks, thank you everyone for tuning in uh, listening on your way to work whatever you've done because i know this is obviously on amazon uh, music this is on spotify and it's on youtube so however you're watching or listening to us thank you for that um and we shall see you again next time thank you everyone for joining us and we'll see you later bye